All right, yeah, we'll give everybody uh, another uh, one or two minutes, and then um, you got to get any uh, stragglers coming in, then we'll we'll go and get started. Yep, stragglers are welcome. All right, we'll uh, we'll go and get, uh, get this kick uh, uh, started here. Um, and everybody, feel free to jump in with any questions uh, as we're going through it. Um, I know there could be some some questions here, so yeah, we'll be talking. To, uh, Robert Stanton's going to give most of the presentation. Um, I'll jump in with any uh, comments or points. Uh, but yeah, jump in with any questions you guys uh, you guys have. Hi, I'm uh, I'm Bob Stanton, and. Uh, Nick and I represent Stanton Sales and Service. We are the exclusive rep for all Tube Turns products over a uh, 14 state area here in the Midwest and throughout the Northeast and Mid-Atlantic states and Southeast. Uh, I spent a combined 10 years or so with uh, Cameron valves and Tube Turns. Uh, in fact, I retired from Tube Turns uh, about three years ago and became their exclusive manufacturer's rep uh, over this 14 state territory. Um, so I've spent a lot of time with uh, the transmission pipeline design offices and integrity people of all the U.S. and Canadian pipeline operators that uh, own gas gathering and gas transmission and storage operations in our territory. Uh, in fact, I established many of the accounts uh, that uh, Two Turns has uh, with with these pipeline operators. Um, Tube Turns has been around since 1927. Just very quickly, they were the first company in America to design and patent and fabricate forged seamless pipe elbows and returns for the piping industry. And uh, they were pretty dominant for uh, over six decades in that business. We exited it in the 80s, but we have been making uh, fittings for the piping industry for over nine decades, primarily for midstream oil and gas. These are the companies that uh, we typically deal with. These are the companies who have approved uh, two turns products. That's most of the Canadian and US uh, pipeline operators. So Southern Company Gas in Chicago area, we do work with their affiliated Dicor Gas and with the other Southern Gas companies like uh, Virginia Natural Gas. Uh, same thing with Dominion Energy. We supply insulated joints to their affiliated Carolina Gas Transmission and uh, Questar out in Utah, uh, Marathon Petroleum, uh, we do a lot of work for Marathon. That's year after year. One of our largest customers. They've standardized on our uh, double bolt closure. Uh, Anbridge, TC, all the companies on this list, we supply either insulated joints or pipeline closures or anchor forgings or all three products too. Uh, some of these companies buy direct. Marathon buys direct. Dominion buys direct. Consumers Energy buys direct. They have a purchase agreement with Tube Turns. Uh, most other companies don't. And for that reason, uh, when I established, for example, TC Energy and NISORS, I 
directed them, suggested they buy through a third party distributor and they wound up with uh, MRC Global. So MRC uh, handles a lot of their stuff, handles all the NIPSCO and NISORS and, and, and uh, Columbia Gas uh, product that we provide them, but just all these companies on this, uh, on this list. Uh, actively supplying them with product, have written specs for many of them on file. Not everyone has written specs for product of, of this kind. Uh, so oftentimes they simply provide us with design conditions and we uh, provide price and delivery. Uh, a lot of integrity management programs going on right now. We supply insulated joints and anchor forgings to a lot of these gas utilities, all these gas utilities on this list. Uh, some of them have an AML, some of them don't. Some of them have written specs, some of them don't. Uh, all of them provide design conditions and we support their uh, integrity management programs, such things as uh, well, methane reduction programs uh, to eliminate bolted connections, et cetera. But we have active uh, initiatives with each of these companies and uh, large orders for IJs from quite a few of them. Uh, just very quickly, our qualifications to provide these products, we're ISO certified. Our plant in Louisville, our ASME facility in Louisville is ISO certified. The quality management system is predicated on ASME Section 8 Division 1. Uh, we're a U-stamp and a U-2-stamp holder. Of course, the U-stamp is for pressure vessel fabrication. The U-2-stamp with the U-2A partial data report is what we provide to uh, a fabricator of a pressure vessel. Uh, we're providing the head for the pressure vessel or the closure, so we need, a, need to provide them with the U-2A report. So we've got our stamp, obviously in-house uh, product design, engineering, and fabrication, 10 degree engineers. We engineer to order. For a long time, we're the only custom fabricator of monolithic insulated joints in the U.S. There might be one other one now, can't confirm that, but we're a custom fabricator, so we can follow any spec. Uh, in fact, we did that recently on a Magellan order we got that I think initially started with um, uh, with Farnsworth. Uh, worked with a guy named Bob Ellis. Bob, if you're on, uh, uh, that eventually did become an order. Um, they had pipe wall on different sides of the uh, different sides of the IJ that were of different wall thickness. And so of course they needed custom fabrication, tapered bore. Anyway, that eventually became an order and that was ordered through Magellan, uh, pardon me, through uh, MRC. Uh, I, did, I did copy one, all of that, by the way. Uh, we got a full-time welding engineer, full-time national board, authorized inspector, he's there every business day. Company's run by a degree engineer, last 15 years. And again, 93 years in continuous operation. Uh, those are our qualifications. Um, I didn't talk a lot about the quality manual, but obviously it's available uh, for inspection at any time. We do virtual plant tours with tube turns as well. They focus on the insulated joint manufacturing cell where we uh, fabricate these insulated joints. Um, all right, we'll jump into mitigated, <laughs> pardon me, we'll jump into uh, insulated joints and uh, uh, corrosion mitigation on uh, buried steel uh, pipelines. You know, uh, obviously steel needs to be protected from uh, its environment. Uh, buried, buried surface, they deteriorate over time through an electrochemical reaction known as oxidation, or rusting, or electrolysis. So mitigation strategy of course, it involves coatings of different types, protective or barrier coatings of different types. Uh, epoxy based typically for buried service, uh, fusion bonded or densocrodol is a, is a uh, common, uh, frequently used coating. But again, we use coatings of, uh, of your choice or customer specification. Um, you know, pipelines are, are, are known for their high yield strength pipeline materials and their toughness, but not for their uh, corrosion resistance. So uh, that's the reason for protective coatings. Of course, those coatings are not perfect. Uh, they have holidays or flaws or defects, and um, the coatings can be damaged by rough handling or uh, installation. Uh, so you need a cathodic protection system in order to uh, provide levels of protective corrosion current. Uh, to mitigate corrosion damage due to these coating defects.
Yeah, so, uh, so typically on insulated joints, um, we do coat the outside uh, with your coating of choice. Our, our standard is the, the two-part two epoxy. Uh, for the uh, Magellan midstream uh, insulated joint that we provided, they actually wanted us to coat the inside as well with, uh, with Denzoprotol. So um, if that's something you want, just let us know. Uh, like I said, typically we, we would only coat the outside uh, with a, an exotic coating or anything differing from our standard. Uh, but if you do want the inside coated as well, just let us know. You can also use insulated joints to protect uh, cathodic protection systems. And what are insulated joints? Well, they're prefabricated unions of butt weld constructions that are a model block used to connect two ends of a pipe, typically uh, of the same wall thickness and material grade, sometimes not. Uh, one continuous weld on each side of the pipe, so it's a permanent installation as opposed to uh, maybe a flanged isolation kit with separate flanges and bolts and nuts and insulators. Um, obviously, the monolithic insulated joint, and I should point out we're talking about the tube turn series W or the W series insulated joint, is that monoblock. Uh, so it is a one piece uh, solid construction and it's used to isolate pipe work from electrical charges and uh, sources of stray DC. So the electrically isolator segment the pipeline, you know, where do sources of stray DC come from? Uh, well, electrified railroads nearby, nearby pumping compressor stations, uh, mining operations, any large user of direct current, and of course, uh, the cathodic protection system itself and and uh, the CP system of adjacent pipelines. So stray DC can be picked up um, by the pipeline and discharged into the soil at some distance on the pipeline. So the process of discharging off the pipe and into the soil accelerates corrosion uh, of the pipe wall at that discharge point and actually thins it out at, at the wall. And uh, that causes stray current corrosion or localized corrosion. So we provide insulated joints to isolate or segment the pipeline and that prevents metal to metal contact across the joint so that uh, stray DC can only travel so far. So it increases resistivity uh, between the pipeline sections and adjoining structures and it actually improves the efficiency of the cathodic protection system itself because it optimizes uh, current output from rectifiers. So it retains and borders off the uh, cathodic protection system. So that's what an IJ does, and that's what an IJ is. Uh, design codes and material standards, uh, all the ones you'd expect. Depends on the industry we're following. Uh, of course, the 31.4, B31.8 for uh, liquid or gas transmission, B31.3 for process piping, and of course, the relevant sections of uh, ASME code, section nine for welding. That's all done under roof, company certified. Welders working to written procedure specifications that are based on Section 9. And of course, the other relevant sections of ASME Section 8. Uh, material grades, of course, API 5L, the X grades, and um, ASTM and SA grade uh, materials, high yield materials, A694, F42 through F70. Uh, we typically combine that with uh, SA350 or SA105, depending on your pipe's chemistry. And of course, we need your OD, wall thickness, your pipe grade, design pressure temperature, what design code we're working to, et cetera. Those are our design standards. This is the W series monolithic insulated joint. Uh, construction of it begins as a, a forged seamless rolled ring. We've got many different suppliers of forged seamless rolled rings. Freesia, a company called Freesia, is a probably foremost among them. I mean, they all kind of specialize in yields and deliveries and sizes, et cetera. Uh, we order a lot from Freesia. They're a very fine supplier of the aerospace industry and the oil and gas industry, but um, we don't stock this material. I mean, we do have forged rolled rings, but we typically wait till we get an order and then we place an order for material. It typically takes a week to two weeks, depending on uh, the material uh, itself. Um, Picture to the right is a couple of hubs. And that's the forged rolled ring. That's the hub that we machine out of it. This is a pipe puff that we installed on the hub. Some companies want us to install pipe puffs. Um, when they do, we request the 
uh, pipeline operator to supply the pipe and the MTRs, and we do all the the fit up and the welding and NDE uh, at our shop in Louisville. Um, you'll notice these hubs. We have a we have a groove machined in the face of each hub, and then we we press in a Viton O-ring. We take both of these hubs and we mount them in a press and we put an insulator in between those two Viton O-rings. Uh, here's, here's the full assembly. Here's the one welding hub and the second welding hub um, in a press under pre-calculated loading with an insulator, premium FR4 insulator, fire flame retardant, uh, two O-rings, one here, one here. That's the press fit into those grooves that we machine into the weld hub. Uh, so you've got your insulator here. We've got another lap insulator here. Uh, cavity voids we fill with liquid epoxy, dielectric compound. This component here is a, uh, a forged yoke. We split at 6 and 12 o'clock and place around these two hubs and this insulator that's sandwiched in between two bites on O-rings. And under pre-calculated loading, we make uh, closure welds at 6 and 12 o'clock. And then we UT the welds and they become, uh, that inspection report becomes part of your data package. But those components are permanently locked into position. That's a low temperature Viton O-ring, uh, premium FR insulator. Uh, again, cavity voids are filled with liquid epoxy, non-conducting. What we do is we take this, after it's assembled, we take this uh, assembly and we stand it on end and we, lick, we, we mix and pour in liquid uh, a, a caulking sealant. When that hardens, uh, we pour in the liquid epoxy. That takes up all this space right here, seals it internally. Uh, I mean, seals it externally. It is sealed internally and externally. And that seals off the internal, uh, the ex to its external environment and it's non-conductive. So you've got non-conductive material here. You've got two-part epoxy coating uh, interior and on the exterior. Uh, again, coating of your choice. And of course, this is hydrostatic. We tested to one and a half times its design pressure. So uh, this is a boltless design, so it's maintenance free. It is through board to allow for the passage of uh, pigs and scrapers and inspection tools. Uh, but it can be taper board to connect pipes of different wall thickness. Again, we're a custom fabricator, so IJs to just about any spec or design conditions uh, using high yield, low temperature carbon steel forge rolled rings that we order after an order is placed with us. Forgings uh, to match corresponding yield strength and wall thickness, of course. So we need to know your pipe grade and, and your wall thickness. Um, we can UT the forgings or the weld ends for customer spec. They're factory assembled. Part of your data package is a hydrostatic test report. They're tested at 1.5 design pressure according to ASME code. They're electric electrically tested to a thousand volts DC. We run across it. Um, that's a resistance test that we give it. We also give it a withstand test. Uh, it's not a breakdown test. It's a non-destructive test, that, uh, a test for current leakage. We use 5,000 volts uh, AC for the withstand test. Uh, and of course, it's well tested. So those documents become part of your data package. Uh, it's leak proof. Uh, we, of course, blast it and coat it internally and externally with coating of your choice. Um, this this W series is made in the U.S. with U.S. forged material to ASME design codes, so we comply with Buy America provisions. Not every order is Buy America. Uh, Lifecor provides us with a lot of orders for insulated joints and closures and anchor forgings. Uh, I'd say maybe three quarters of it's Buy America. Uh, the rest of it's not. But we're by America. We're made in the U.S. Here's our rating, size 2 through 42 inch, class 150 through 900 insulated joints. So, for example, the class 150 insulated joint has a working pressure of 285 PSI. So we follow the B16 five ratings. There's a class 600 working pressure good to 1480. So, again, it's tested to 2220 PSI for 15 minutes. I had an order last week from Consumers Energy that called for an eight hour uh, hydro test. That's fine. Design factor 0.5 typically, uh, ASME section eight. 
Um, but of course, if somebody wants to be more conservative, anything off 0.5 or anything off standard product offerings, Nick and I run through tube turns uh, engineering department for a quick engineering review and a recommendation. Hub materials, uh, two through six inch, we use pipe. SA 106 grade C, 52,000 minimum yield strength or eight inch and above insulated joints. We use forgings to match the corresponding X grade pipe. So of course they're high yield uh, 694 forgings. Uh, if it's F52 material, that's pretty standard. Uh, we can quote that typically same day out of this office. Higher yield material, we do have to go through tube turns engineering. They like to check material price and availability before we issue a quote. Um, so, but higher yield materials are available. TC Energy, we shipped it last month. That's uh, 36 inch class 600. They were straight grade F70 insulated joints for Buckeye Express down there in Southern Ohio. Uh, TC Energy specified uh, 0.45, pardon me, 0.48% carbon equivalent uh, for that material. And that's what we provided and stamped it on the hubs. That may seem a little high to you, uh, forgings always have a higher uh, percent CE than, than, than rock pipe, but uh, that was the percent CE they, uh, they specified, and that's what we went with. Um, we dual certify, at minimum, we dual certify our weld hubs with any product. Closures, insulated joints, anchor flanges. So we use high yield material and we combine it with SA grade material, typically SA50 LF2 class one, the low impact, I mean, pardon me, low temperature, alloy or we triple certify the weld hub with the addition of SA-105 for its hardness uh, to help ensure a good quality weld. Um, again, forged pipe bodies, they're welded under compression loads. Those design calculations are available. We simply need to know up front uh, during an order uh, if they're needed. Uh, things like approval drawings, if those are needed up front, we need to know because our deliveries, which is a standard eight week delivery, uh, which is pretty good compared to five month delivery from IJs out of Italy. Um, yeah, we, we, we compete well on, uh, on, on standard deliveries. Yeah, just one thing I want to point out real quick. Um, so the, the picture you see there on the right, so that's our W style insulated joint, um, has the raised surfaces and uh, the design is essentially the same, but we do have another uh, insulated joint that we sell called the pipe pup insulated joint, um, which has the, the pipe pups, as you see on that picture, already installed. Um, the Really, the only difference between the two is the material. Uh, the material for that, we use API 5L line pipe. Uh, we don't use forgings. Uh, and we do keep that one in stock. However, it is made at our plant in, in Mexico. So if you have any customers that are, uh, who need the uh, Buy America initiative, uh, customers that come to mind, uh, NICOR, Southern Company Gas, uh, they have a lot of projects that do need the uh, the Buy, Buy America initiative. Uh, you can't use that one, but if you do have a customer who's under the gun, uh, they need something real quick, we do stock the uh, the pipe pup style, um, and that's all X52 material, standard wall thickness, um, up to size 16 inch. So That's a great point, and Nick does all of our day-to-day -day quoting here. So Nick, uh, he's a wealth of information about material availability, and uh, he interacts daily with two turns engineering and two turns inside sales of what well, we both do. And uh, but Dick does all the quoting and obviously material availability is always the wild card in, in uh, delivering product. Um, eight week standard delivery, we say after approvals. Uh, that's after we get the approval drawing back, of course. Uh, it takes seven to 10 days to generate one. And uh, of course, when we get it back, the clock begins on uh, that eight week delivery. But uh, two turns is awfully good about delivery. So I was with Cameron for many, many years. They make great products, but they struggled to deliver. This company delivers uh, in their state of the time period. That's a big advantage for us because, as I say, um, you got to go to Italy to get uh, other insulated joints. Nothing wrong with that, but it takes about five months to deliver them. Eight weeks standard delivery with us. And Nick pointed out we also make one product offshore. It's called our Pipe Pup IJ. Why would you want a Pipe Pup IJ? Delivery, if you want the pipe pups already installed, uh, X-grade piping, it's made from X-grade piping. It's made to our uh, 
uh, quality standards and to ASME design codes. It's just made in Mexico. That's the only difference. So obviously we don't use it on uh, customers that uh, have Buy America provisions. So just, just pointing that out as well, we can provide information on the W series or the pipe club style. But again, but again, I guess I'd like to point out the, the design is essentially the same. I mean, it's just two hubs that come together with a um, uh, insulator in between them and the O-rings. So really the only difference is the material. Uh, so we, we just kind of wanted to come up with a design that uh, was a little more cost effective that we could compete with our uh, competitors on. So that um, incorporated pipe pumps. Yeah. Yeah. We've kind of seen like the industry, I guess a lot of, a lot of customers are requesting a pipe pumps. Uh, the reason they do that, um, I mean, it's not required, but you don't want to exceed 250 degrees when you're welding up the, uh, the insulated joint to the pipeline. Um, and the, the pipe pumps kind of give you, uh, just some uh, extra material to kind of dissipate the heat. Uh, so it, I, I guess I would recommend them if if uh, you are welding up in the field, and especially in the larger sizes, uh, they kind of make it a little bit easier to uh, kind of handle the the insulated joint in the field. Uh, but they're not required. So, uh, but we have seen a lot of customers uh, just kind of request them um, recently. So, here's a material test report. Hey, hey, Nick or or Bob, can I ask a question real quick? Sure. Um, I guess I, I don't have a whole lot of experience with uh, isolating joints. I've, I've used insulating kits quite a bit with a flange, and I know that, um, you know, Marathon has, and I work on Marathon projects, Marathon has requested that type of application quite a bit. Um, mm -hmm. Is is this type of um, equipment, is this basically the same application without requiring a, a flange set? Is, is that the purpose, or is there some other uh, yeah. improvements? Exactly. You're exactly right, and you're right about Marathon. We do a lot with Marathon. There's only two closures approved at Marathon. Really, it's us and TDW, uh, but they put insulated joints, our, our insulated joint, our Series W, on there about two and a half, three years ago. A guy named Patrick Fleck, if you know Patrick. He yep. was the uh, subject matter expert over there. Is not now, but he's still with Marathon, but uh, not in that capacity. Anyway, you're right. Even though we're on their approved manufacturer's list for monolithic insulated joints, they don't use them. They use flange isolation kits. And re really, the main the main advantage to or I guess the difference is um, so flange kits. A lot of times they're used above ground. Um, obviously, you can't really bury a flange kit. You'd have to put like a box around it, and by that point, I mean it just becomes too cost prohibitive to bury a flange kit with a box around it. So um, if it's buried surface, uh, uh, the the monolithic is definitely what you want to go with. I mean, you, you can use a monolithic above ground, um, but normally companies companies uh, use just a flange kit just because it's it's less expensive. But um, but th those are the main differences. So yeah, they, they are an alternative to each other. Um, the, the only other, other difference is obviously a, a, a monolithic joint is assembled under under uh, controlled conditions. Um, it's it's tested hydrostatically and electrically. Um, obviously, when you're putting a flange get together in the field, um, I mean, there could be windy that day, it could be raining, you could get some, some dust and debris in, in between the uh, the insulator and the uh, and the metal, so it could kind of short it out. But, um, so that, that's the main, main difference between the two. Yeah. Advantages and disadvantages, no universal insulator. Um, yeah, it's for people who want to get rid of uh, bolted connections and, and uh, obviously, there's a forbearance service. Uh, they can yeah. be used above ground, but yeah. Uh, yeah, it makes sense. I, I appreciate that description. Yeah. And uh, I guess one more question I had was, I guess, the installation of this thing. I mean, is it just a butt weld on each side of the fitting? Is, is that what it is? What, I mean, just. That's, yeah, exactly right. Just a one continuous butt weld on each side of the pipe. And, okay. Uh, you know, just follow a qualified weld procedure. And um, that, that's all you need. I mean, we don't uh, re recommend stress relieving. We, we say do not, uh, do not exceed 250 degrees F on this yoke, on the yoke of this product. Uh, it's a massive yoke and, uh, you know, it's a heat sink. And it is kind of a, uh, you know, a massive product uh, in terms of its proportions. But uh, it's really an issue as long as you don't exceed 250 degrees. So you can preheat it, but uh, uh, no stress relieving. 
That would liquefy the uh, liquid epoxy we have in this in these uh, in this design. Uh, here's a an NPR, and of course, this is tied to the material and the serial numbers and the heat code and all this information. This happens to be a Dominion Energy order for a couple of 16-inch class 900 horizontal double bolt yoke style closures uh, for a launcher receiver project out of their Renovo PA office. Um, and of course, here's the relevant information: serial number and uh, heat code and an MTR for the hub, the head or the door, and the yoke itself. So three pressure containing components of this closure. And there's the serial numbers, there's the quantity, customer information, of course, chemistry, hardness, percent CE, 0.42% on this one, uh, in fact, tested to, et cetera, et cetera. So supplier MTRs when requested, uh, on all this information. Obviously, we supply uh, Cypress Tube Turns MTRs for all pressure containing components and supplier MTRs are available upon request. Just a drawing. Uh, this information right here, good information. I highlighted it and put it here. We can give general drawings anytime, of course, an approval drawing comes after an order, but here's the material. This one happens to be TC Energy. It's the uh, F70 uh, yokes and hubs that are, or IJs that we provided, 0.48% max on the hubs and the yokes, the O-rings, FKM, et cetera, et cetera. The coating, um, uh, the fact that it was hydrostatically tested at 2220, so we know this is a class 600 uh, closure. And then the yoke closure wells, electrical resistance test, and we gave this one a withstand test using uh, 3,000 volts at uh, 50 hertz for one minute. It's a standard withstand test. Uh, I say standard. Uh, it's optional, actually. Um, it's an optional test that you can provide. All this information is on the drawing. Here's resistance testing, 1,000 volts DC across the test lugs. Our standard is 25, greater than 25 mega ohms minimum resistance. And the average resistance about 2,000, greater than 2,000 mega ohms. Yeah, I mean, obviously, we, we can't test these joints to failure. So um, that, that's why we want to give it the, uh, if, if requested, we give it the whisk hand test to uh, 5kV. But obviously, we're not going to, we're not going uh, to test it to failure. We can say that a breakdown would safely be something above 5kV. And then here's the withstand test that we can give uh, as an option. Uh, data package. Uh, you'll notice on this to the right, this is where we stencil stamp all the relevant information. Tube turns, uh, 20 inch class 600 series W insulated joint, the wall thickness, serial number, heat code, etc. Stamp right on the uh, high J of, of the, uh, the hub of the IJ. Uh, here you do, you'll notice our uh, test connections. So you can run your test leads and do resistance testing from time to time in line. Yeah, so uh, actually Piedmont Natural Gas, they uh, they actually made a comment to us that they like the uh, the short pattern of our W style IJ and that it has the uh, the test leads. Uh, some of our competitors don't do not have um, any type of lead that you can uh, you can run up to the surface and, and test to make sure it's still working. And um, and actually, uh, we can't relate, uh, relocate those test leads. Um, I just had a customer the other day, they requested that the, the uh, terminal screw be located on the uh, kind of three o'clock position of that raised surface. Um, not exactly sure why, but um, so yeah, it, it is customizable if you want those located in, in a uh, different position. We can work to any spec. Strength of design on page four of our brochure. Uh, we can either send that to you. Uh, you can go to stantonsales.net or tubeturns.com. And um, the information on prototype testing. We took a size six inch and size 24 inch class 600 F65 material, and we did uh, deep testing and torsion testing, pen testing. Uh, the IJ is actually stronger than the pipe into which it is welded. And the results of that testing is on page four uh, of our brochure for anyone interested in those results. Uh, applications for insulated joints. 
Um, we recommend they're used to separate and isolate the pipeline's cathodic protection system. Uh, it improves the protection system by strengthening, strengthening the uh, output and bordering the protection system off from the pipeline, from the rest of the pipeline. Um, IGG used to protect equipment or prevent interference or damage to sensitive electronics on valves and sensors, etc. cetera. Uh, used to separate the main pipeline from other structures and a main service, and the main and <laughs> used in both main and service line connections. So it's for liquid pipelines, gas transmission service, um, pipeline entry points to processing plants and before and after pump stations, uh, anywhere different material connects to avoid the effects of a galvanic corrosion or where a poorly coated pipe uh, meets a well coated pipe or any time there's a custody transfer or asset uh, division, et cetera, et cetera. And the last thing I want to point out about insulated joints, anyone who has an interest in uh, pricing to purchase or price pricing simply for budgetary purposes, uh, we request you complete our insulated joint application data sheet, send it to us, and we'll kick you out a quote, typically same day if it's a standard product. That's insulated joints. Um, if you guys have any questions, you're welcome to throw them at us. About insulated joints, we've been making them for 60. Well, we've been making insulated joints for oil and gas applications since 1965, so that's a long time. Um, and I say, as I say, for a long time, we're the only uh, insulated joint, custom insulated joint fabricator in the U.S. Yeah, so now we'll uh, we'll go ahead and jump into uh, quick opening closures. Um, and um, but yeah, if you have any questions about insulated joints, is uh, feel free to jump in any time. Same sectors, midstream sectors, gathering, processing, transmission, and storage. We provide more closure types than any company in the world. We make more closure types than any company in the world. That includes uh, probably our flagship closure. We call it the Toolless. It is a true quick opening closure. It's designed to be opened by a single operator in about a minute with no special tools. We provide a lot of them to Gas Tech Engineering, Peerless, uh, Taylor Forge, primarily those three fabricators, but many other regional fabricators across the country of uh, pipeline and production equipment. Uh, these happen to be 84 inch class 150, ASME class 150, toolless closures destined for uh, seawater filtration uh, platforms uh, in the Gulf. Um, toolless is a hinged closure. As you'll notice there's a hinge right here. So this one would swing open like a car door. But we also offer right-hand hinge closures. We also offer vertical closures for uh, vertical vessels or inclined applications when the vertical is inclined. Uh, not everyone does. All closures at tube terms, without exception, um, are all ASME rated closures, I should say, are designed to ASME Section 8, Division 1 and 2. That's an ASME rated closure. It's 84 inch. Uh, it's actually uh, ASME class 150 through 2500. This one's the one Marathon standardized on, Kinder Morgan standardized on it. Enbridge has a lot of them in their system. Um, in fact, Kinder Morgan Canada is standardized on uh, only on the double bolt yoke style closure. They like its tightness. And for cold weather operations up there or anything, anything north of St. Louis, as you guys know, uh, that's what Marathon's kind of decided for a low temperature biton o-ring seals in their closures uh, that they get from us and they love St. Louis. Well, Enbridge is the same way. They want low temperature minus 40 biton FKM uh, grade 90 um, o-rings and pressure warning device gaskets. So that's what we supply to them. But as you'll notice, this is a also a hinge closure. You can see the hinge clearly here. Left hand, this one swings open to the right. You specify that at time of ordering. Uh, this one has a split yoke. It's split at 6 and 12 o'clock, just like you saw in the IJ. That's a recurring theme in two turns products. We use a split yoke as a clamp. And it's driven top and bottom by draw bolts. There's one up here and one down here. We'll, we'll show you a video next. One picture's worth a thousand words. And I'll just point out the third ASME rated closures, that threaded closure in the lower left. Threaded with a davit assembly, we make them of different types. 
a uh, little, uh, little tougher uh, to work with. Operators are not especially fond of them for that reason, especially in the larger sizes. Why do we make them? People buy them, uh, but for safety concerns, we wouldn't recommend using, uh, for example, a you know, 42 inch uh, class 900 thread enclosure. It's just too heavy. We, we recommend the tool is for double bolt, but it's offered. Yeah, so th thread enclosures, I mean, obviously they're, it's a it's a simple design, it works well, but uh, uh, like like uh, Robert had said, uh, you, you, in the larger sizes, they're kind of just hard to deal with. Um, we actually met with um, Hinkles and McCoy probably, uh, probably about a year ago, and as soon as we men mentioned uh, threaded closures, they were just kind of just like, well, let's bring out the sledgehammer. Uh, <laughs> I mean, obviously yeah. that's that's not in the IOM uh, to open those up, but uh, but they they are the most cost effective. So if 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 cost is your really the only designing uh, deciding factor, uh, threaded is is the uh, the best option. But, cost uh, and uh, cost and availability, and they're and they're good for you know uh, blowdowns, blowdown vents and uh, uh, meter runs. And uh, skid packages where you know you got a small, uh, smaller footprint. Uh, actually, we provided some to Chevron, many of them uh, to Chevron through a fabricator in Pittsburgh, uh, in the Appalachian area. They really use uh, threaded closures on their uh, skid mounted packages, but uh, the fabricator just didn't have enough room, so they went with our toolless vertical closure, which is a lot less weight and uh, size. Um, so. Uh, no universal closure. Uh, that's why there's advantages, disadvantages to any of them. Uh, just a very quickly again, U stamp holder, U2, and R stamp. So when we provide a code stamp closure, you get it. Uh, the order is blessed uh, by the uh, authorized inspector, National Board Authorized Inspector. And of course, we provide the uh, U stamp and the U2A partial data report. And we have an R stamp for repair welding. Uh, Marathon just sent a couple back, uh, a couple of closures back to our shop in Louisville for removal of uh, threaded, uh, or I should say welded uh, stainless steel nipples on the, on the door. And we we uh, we did the repair work in our shop and then uh, shipped them back. They use a lot of flange stuff over there, as you guys know, uh, weld neck flanges on uh, class 600 uh, closures. And so they can take them off and send them in. Uh, this toolless design, uh, all closures in my view, differ in, the des in their design and how they secure the door secure and lock the door to the hub. This one uses a conical thrust ring. It's, it's a spring band and it transfers the loading, the pressure loading 360 degrees around this hub. Uh, here's a good picture of it. We're using a vertical toolless closure with a hand wheel and davit assembly. This is the locking mechanism for the toolless closure. That is the spring band, that continuous thrust ring you see. And if you'll notice individual duplex uh, stainless steel locking segments that are rigidly connected to the spring band. So right now it's in the closed and locked position. So the, the spring band is expanded and you'll notice there's a tapered surface on each of these locking segments. They slide up into a groove that we machine, a ferro groove we machine into this hub. And when they slide up into the, the groove in the hub and that pressure warning device and removable locking segment are in place. This closure can't be open. Uh, one picture is worth a thousand words. I'll just run the video. Um, first, he's going to remove the code required pressure warning device along with the removable segment. When it removes that segment, that creates a gap and allows the spring band to retract. And notice uh, when you go to close it, you'll notice those keepers slide up underneath the groove in the hub. Moving one locking segment is by snap action. action and refracts. And that brings the spring band and those locking segments, that whole assembly. The locking, but that brings the locking ring and pull. Now we could open it all the way and swing that door out of the upside of 20 inches.
Then the operator will reinstall that removable segment along with pressure warning device and that closure is locked, closed and locked. This is a horizontal tool disclosure as opposed to the vertical one we just showed you, but the same locking mechanism, stainless steel duplex spring band connected to those stainless steel individual locking segments. So it's the same locking segment it scales up to size 84 inch so that this closure can be opened by a single operator in about a minute with no special tools, just a simple point lever that we provide, uh, turning this pressure warning screw and then removing it. This pressure warning screw is actually threaded into the door. We uh, bore a door, bore a uh, uh, hole into the pressure space through the door and thread it and insert this pressure warning screw, which has a gasket at its base that seals off against the door, and we machine a, a slot, we mill a slot in the threads of this screw so that it functions as a bleed port. If the operator takes a couple or three turns on this pressure warning screw and they hear gas escaping or see a liquid seeping out, they'd want to close it up and check their vent and drain valves and gauges and make sure that that vessel is connected or is uh, disconnected from its pressure source. So uh, let's assume the oper operator determines that the vessel is uh, uh, isolated. Yeah, so just, just to find out real quick. So the, the uh, pressure warning device is not a bleeder port. It's not a vent, uh, vent valve. Um, it's just to alert the operator that there is still pressure behind that door. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you want um, if it's, a, it's an old launcher design, something like that, and you do want some type of uh, maybe like a half inch or a quarter inch NPT in the head to install some type of um, a valve or something like that, we can do that. So, but the uh, the pressure warning device is not designed to be any type of uh, uh, vent valve or anything like that. Safety device that gives you the operator an indication of pressure behind that closure. Crash. We'll go ahead and uh, run it real quick. We just want to stop it once uh, once he gets the door open to uh, show the look and feel design. This is a door in hub design, so the seal is placed in the door in this design. So we machine a groove in the door and by press fit, we install uh, a lip seal. It's a spring energized seal, well proven design. And uh, so this lip seal itself provides the force required for low pressure sealing. And as pressure builds, the seal becomes tighter. Uh, and the reason for that is the spring energized seal. Uh, this has a stainless steel spring uh, inserted inside that one piece fully molded seal. And that's that's the spring that provides the energy for, again, low pressure sealing and vacuum conditions. Uh, it's a press fit, it's easily removable. We stock these in the shop. You wouldn't automatically replace it. You would if it were damaged in any way that might affect the seal against the flat seat. And there is a flat seat inside the hub. So you wanna keep that clear of any corrosion products uh, because it's a good idea uh, have a clean surface for this lip to spread out against its its seat. Yeah, so we really don't recommend this closure for any type of uh, dirty service. Uh, if you're dealing with anybody who is in the uh, upstream upstream uh, area, we so like Antero, Mark West, um, we probably wouldn't recommend the toolless. I mean, you, you could use it, uh, but it, it will require a little more TLC to make sure that that seating surface is uh, clean of any corrosion. Or, uh, or just dirt or debris, uh, just to make sure that lip seal can spread uh, evenly against that seating surface to uh, provide a good seal. But 
Uh, for any pipeline quality gas, uh, especially gas utility companies, um, it, it's definitely a good closure. One more thing uh, I'd like to point out here too. Um, what was I going to point out? Oh, this has got, uh, of course, the three components of this are the welding hub itself that's connected to the vessel. And uh, of course, we, we bevel the ends to match your corresponding uh, pipe bevel. Uh, but there's this, the weld hub, the door itself, and the associated hinging. This is a, a locking bolt, a uh, jacking bolt of a lock nut that allows you to center the door vertically. There's a procedure for centering it horizontally. It's important that the door be centered, of course, on the hub. Um, I'll just run to um, same B16 fire ratings for uh, all of our closures, all of our products. Uh, that's the toolless closure. Uh, again, high yield materials combined with SA grade materials. Uh, pressure warning device, that's code required. Fully molded lip seal, different terminations. Uh, I'll go real quick to the double bolt yoke style closure. This is the one that Marathon uses a lot. Uh, pressure warning device here, pressure warning device here, hold down plate. Two tabs are welded to each yoke. And once that plate engages those tabs and this nut's torqued, that closure is closed and locked and can't be open. Uh, it's the door and the hub and a split yoke. Split at 6 and 12 o'clock, and on each split, we put a pressure warning device. Let me run the video here. This one uses an O ring that's placed in the hub, as opposed to a lipstick placed in the door. Sure, I'll never stand on the yoke ring. This one happens to be a uh, left hand swing, as you can on the right. Other side, sock, and pocket, rock, simply not going to be tight. it open. O ring. We machine a groove in the hub, it's dovetailed to the center. And we install a by press fit, uh, an O-ring of different types. We, of course, uh, provide Vunan and Viton and explosive decompression resistant material, elastomers of any type. We standardized on Parker. Uh, we've been making this closure since 1959. There's nothing new here, just uh, material and uh, other upgrades to stay in compliance with uh, ASME code. That is the double bolt yoke style closure. Nick and I got a big initiative going with TC Energy. They've got over 1,200 tube turns closures, over 300 double bolts, and we're supplying uh, part numbers of pricing for replacement yoke bolt units, top and bottom. That's a seven piece assembly. And then for uh, the primary O ring and pressure warning device gaskets for those 300 or so double bolt closures that TC Energy has on launch and receiver sites at all of our legacy pipelines from here the, to, the, to the West Coast. Yeah, so as I mentioned before, um, like I said, we, we probably wouldn't recommend the toolless for uh, upstream applications, but the double bolt, um, it's definitely a rugged closure. Uh, it, it, uh, it's been used for a long time, no issues with leaking. Um, it's, it's definitely a good closure for really any application, uh, especially upstream. Um, but uh, yeah, as Bob stated, uh, Marathon pretty much standardized on it. They always get the, uh, the chain and sprocket drive um that they're happy with the double wall closure mm -hmm. yeah and as i mentioned kidderboard in canada that's their standard is the double bolt and the reason for that is it's extreme seat tightness uh here's the operating aids that we provide you got an angled application we can provide an angled uh an angled uh adapter plate for this uh, double bolt uh left hand swing closure you can see that that adapter plate keeps the hinge vertical and that allows the operator to lift the uh, closure open like a car door rather than having to lift the, the whole weight of the closure out of its resting position. Uh, operating aid. Here's another one that's spring loaded design for anything over 10 inch vertical. Uh, we provide a spring assist so it kind of pops open. 
And then if you'll notice, this one's got a weld neck flange uh, welded onto it. We fluorocarbon coat those bolts. So all the bolts you see out there are fluorocarbon coated. And we've been making this for, like I say, since 1959, so nothing new. This one's spring. Uh, yeah, and actually, um, Marathon actually approved us for welding on uh, weld neck flanges uh, at our factory. So uh, that just happened last year. Uh, so, uh, so yeah, if you do any work with Marathon, we're perfect. Uh, this is just another uh, double vessel. Change five Notice that she serves right now. She serves the interior. She takes the interior of the back of that hole, and on the back of the hub, so the surface is coming together. You pull you provide the whole thing on the over establish the seat. That's why this is tight. Well, it's the hell out of it. Threads to, and of course, there's a gas pressure from the devices at the top of the line. I'm checking the gas. I'm checking. Hold on, I'm just going to bring up uh, anchor flanges real yeah. quick because I know they want to do. Anchor flanges, uh, they're typically used to immobilize pipelines or river crossings or turns of the pipeline, launcher receiver sites, pump and compressor stations, especially pump stations because of all the vibration. Um, so they, they restrain pipeline movement. They're made at our ASME facility in Louisville. They're made under the ASME uh, quality manual and uh, to the same standards, same materials as closures and insulated joints, uh, high yield forgings combined with SA grade materials. Uh, we've got a data sheet for insulated joints, one page data sheet where we extract the necessary design conditions, same thing. We need to know your OD, pipe OD, and wall thickness and material grade and design pressure temperature. And this data sheet collects that information. But uh, we were for a long time, um, as I say, dominant in flange and specialty fittings business for oil and gas pipelines. And we only exited that business in the 80s because it became very commodity driven. We simply could not compete with offshore economically. But we kept uh, some of those fittings and flanges, and the anchor forging is one of them. It's custom design. So whenever we see custom, that's something that has to run through tube turns engineering. So you send us a data sheet, we run it through tube turns, and uh, they do all the sizing and, uh, of course, provide stress calculations when requested. And uh, that is the information we would need. Uh, yeah, so the so the anchor forging it's going to be um, obviously it's it's still going to be belt welded to your your pipeline, but um, and then it's going to be uh, kind of buried in concrete uh, just to uh, mobilize the pipeline from any thrust forces. Um, so that th those are what those are used for. So I mean we don't, we don't see them used uh, a whole lot, but um, Nicor uh, Southern Company Gas. Uh, they use uh, a few of them quite a, or a little bit of, uh, throughout the year. National uh, fuel gas. National fuel gas uses them. So uh, if you have any customers that uh, use any type of anchor forgings, uh, we, we do make TC them. Energy use them. And here's the data sheet we'd, we'd use to extract the necessary design conditions. Uh, uh, we could easily send this data sheet to you. And again, any applications are run through. Uh, tube turns engineering because this product is customized, uh, is, is custom fabricated to your individual design conditions. So it's not something standard. It's not something we quote out of this office. We handle the quotation process, though, by securing your design conditions and submitting them to tube turns engineering. But again, same materials made at the same quality standards at the same plant, uh, our ASME facility in Louisville, Kentucky. Any questions you have about insulated joints, you're welcome to submit to us, and we'll submit to Tube Turns Engineering for a you know, professional evaluation and an analysis of it. 
But I know we're out of time here. Um, I guess I just wanted to open it up real quick if anybody has any questions. If you do have questions, you're welcome to send them to us. Give us a call anytime. Um, and we can provide uh, product information or price and delivery uh, information of any kind. General drawings, if you're interested in that, uh, weights and dimensions, uh, standard materials we use, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, a lot of companies don't have written specs we work with, so uh, it's kind of individual every time we go. We, we go back and forth. Sometimes I go through third party distributors and it's always a little tougher to get information about service conditions from uh, MRC, DNOW, Woolsey, but they're the people who have the purchase agreement directly with the pipeline operator. So those are the people that we typically work through. Um, yeah, whoever that uh, operator's integrator uh, is. Hopefully we, we provided useful information. If there's something we missed, please let us know. And again, if you have questions, uh, submit them to us and um, and uh, it's something we can't answer from this office we'll uh, we'll get two turns engineering involved in fact we get two turns engineering on the phone and have three-way conference calls with pipeline operators frequently or epc firms like yourselves uh, so that's that's also on the table and one more thing we do virtual plant tours so if you have an interest in for example the manufacturing cell where we make ijs uh, we can we can run that for you as well. So there's di different options there that are available to you. Thank you so much for having us in. And uh, we're here to provide information of any kind. Yeah, thanks, Robert. Thanks, Nick. That was really informative for me, I know, and uh, I thought it was a really good presentation. Great, great. Thank you. Thank you. But yeah, I'll, uh, I'll go ahead and uh, su supply the um, the recording of the presentation to you. Uh, like I said, if there's just anybody who couldn't who couldn't join, um, they can watch it later, and, and uh, you can just keep it on file. So, and StanSales.net has all these videos on there if you'd like to see them. All right, thanks again, fellas. Really appreciate it. Thank you.